Hi everybody, it's the Bee here. On this Tech Talk, we'll be looking at my personal favourite, S5000 Aero. cars we're trying to do something that seems a little bit foreign to a lot of people we're trying to tell the air what to do for us the flow initialization point happens right here on the front wing so you can see these these carbon main planes on the car these are the fixed part of the wing you can see they have three tiers and they increase in angle as they get towards the outside there and what they're doing is they're driving the flow upwards they're dropping the pressure under the wing and they're pulling the car down to the road we have a degree of adjustability with these where we can undo some screws and we can change the second plane element there to, to see if we can reduce drag or increase downforce on the front and that can be a tuning method for the driver to get the most out of the race car for themselves. We're now downstream of the front wing towards the middle of the car at the side pod here. The side pod's got a few important things it does for the car. One, it takes that flow from the front end and it squeezes it under the car to produce more downforce. It's got a lot of complex aerodynamic features in there that help generate vortices and squeeze the air and accelerate it to help make that downforce. And then the other really important feature of the side pod is in the hole here. So in this hole we've got the cooling ducts behind there and they're a pretty impressive feature when you think about what they're doing to control that airflow. It's called a diffusing duct and what it does is it increases or expands the column of air that's entering the side pod and what that does is slows the air down and makes it really turbulent. What happens there is it passes through the radiator and it's picking up all the heat off the radiator core and rejecting it all out the back of the car. Helps make sure you can push these things to their maximum without them overheating all day. Nothing says S5000 like a big rear wing. Rear wing on this car is a dual element wing. The reason we use two elements is uh, it, it helps reduce drag of the overall wing and you can imagine if you tried to make this out of one piece, it would be quite large and it actually hurts the downforce it's capable of generating. We have one element that people can use to tune the downforce of the car or the drag. They can just undo these nuts and they can swing the second element to change the attitude of the car out there. One of our goals with tuning the aerodynamics on these cars is to make sure that uh, when, a, when a driver hops in one of these, it's at a setting that they can get used to it, uh, they don't feel scared to push the limits, but from there, once they get confident with the car, they can start doing things where they, they start really going for attack mode and tuning the aero on the car to go as fast as they can. <laughs> One of the things you'll you'll notice straight away with this wing is it's not it's not straight all the way across its span. It actually curves upwards at the centre and around. What this is is to uh, accommodate the changed onset angle of the flow. That is because the bodywork is in front of it. What actually happened is there is a slower air movement at a different angle coming down onto the central part of the wing here to be captured here, and then. The outside element is orientated more to capture that free stream flow that the wing will be exposed to. An end plate's a really important feature of a wing that serves a couple of purposes. One is it gives you a large side area on the car, which is actually similar to having a dart where the flight surface is at the rear, helps you track when the things are getting a bit squirmy. The other thing the end plate does is it's actually sealing the top and the bottom side of the wing. When the airflow is uh, going through over the wing profile, it'll actually slow down at the top surface and it'll speed up at the bottom. And what tends to happen is the high pressure surface wants to spill under the wing and disturb things and, and wreck the flow. You effectively end up with a less efficient wing. When we put an end plate on here, it seals the high pressure and low pressure, pressure sides, ensuring that you get the best efficiency possible out of your wing. So a lot of you are probably wondering, how do we figure out that balance? What are we doing? What methods have we got available to us when we don't have giant wind tunnel testing facilities? For the last few years, we've been uh, working with Applied CCM and Pointwise who uh, do computational wind tunnel analysis for us. 
through that relationship, we've been able to build a really large bank of data and resources. We, we've got a really good handle on what the aerodynamics is doing, and we can also test these cars in a virtual wind tunnel. So these cars with the big V8 engine in the back, they're quite a bit longer than they were originally intended, so they did require a fair bit of work to get the balance sorted out. But through a lot of testing, uh, a lot of previous working knowledge of the cars, we're able to strike a balance that will help give drivers a lot of confidence in the car.